हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन अ पेपर लेबर लॉज विथ पेपर कोड बी बी ए जीरो सेवन वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक ऑफ थर्ड यूनिट दैट इज द ट्रेड यूनियन एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज चेंज ऑफ नेम एंड एमेलगेमेशन ऑफ ट्रेड यूनियंस आई एम रागिनी दीक्षित वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट बी बी डी यूनिवर्सिटी now the contents of this presentation are introduction of the act registration of the trade unions then change of name of trade unions what is the procedure to change the name of trade unions then amalgamation of trade unions and finally the conclusion now this trade union act 1926 contains total 33 sections five chapter and it came into force on 1st june of 1927 the main object of the act the for our to protect workers against exploitation by employers to represent the grievances of employees on behalf of them to the management to protect and safeguard rights of workers provided to them under employment clause or labor laws then to increase participation in management for decision making and to take disciplinary action against workers doing indisciplinary actions so the main objects of the act of this trade union were to protect workers against exploitation to represent the grievances of employees to the management to protect and safeguard the rights of workers to increase participation of workers in management and to take disciplinary action against workers if they are doing any indisciplinary work now in the chapter 1 of this act we have short title extent and commencement then second section we have definitions so the chapter 1 of this act is divided into two sections section 1 have short title extent and commencement of the act then section in section 2 we have definitions which are relevant to this act then coming to the chapter 2 that is related with registration of trade unions here there are section from 3 to 14 in section 3 we have how appointment of registrar is done then mode of registration then section 5 application for registration section 6 provisions to be contained in the rule of a trade union then section 7 contains power to call for further particulars and to require alteration of name by the registrar then section 8 tells us about how the registration is done then section 9 tells the certificate of registration is given to the registered trade union then section 10 uh, 10 tells us about the cancellation of registration section 11 tells us about the appeal where the trade unions can appeal if their registration is cancelled then section 12 registered office section 13 gives information about the incorporation of registered trade union and section 14 that contains certain acts not to apply to registered trade unions so this uh, entire uh, chapter 2 is divided into section 3 to 14 now coming to section Uh, coming to chapter three, it contains section fifteen to section twenty-eight. Here we have rights and liabilities of registered trade union. In section fifteen, we have objects on which general funds may be spent. Section sixteen contains constitution of a separate fund of political purpose. Then section seventeen, uh, criminal conspiracy in the trade disputes. section 18 contains immunity of the trade union from civil suit in certain cases it tells about how the trade unions are immune for civil suits in certain cases then section 19 tells us about the enforceability of agreements section 20 tells us about the right to inspect books of trade unions section 21 tells the right to minors to membership of trade unions section 21a tells us about the disqualification of office bearers of trade union 
section 22 tells us the proportion of office bearers to be connected with the industry section 23 how the change of name can be done of the trade unions section 24 tells us about the amalgamation of trade unions section 25 tells us about the notice of change of name of uh, on um, name on amalgamation then section 26 tells us about the effects of change of name and amalgamation then section 27 how dissolution of trade union can be done and then section 28 the various returns chapter 4 tells us about the power to make regulations and publication of regulation this chapter 4 contains two section that is section 29 and section 30 it tells us about the power to section 29 tells us about the power to make regulations and section 30 tells us about the publication of regulations chapter 5 tells us about the various penalties and procedures which are followed in the trade union act 1947 and these are your section 31 to section 33 section 31 tells us the failure to submit returns what will be the consequences then section 21 uh, supplying false information regarding trade union then section 33 cognizance of offences means who is going to acknowledge these offences now uh, coming to the definition of trade union we have trade union means combination which can be either temporary or permanent and which is formed primarily for the purpose of regulating the relations between workmen and employers between workmen and workmen between employers and employers so this relation this relation can be between workmen and employers between workmen and workmen and between employers and employers and for what this relation is formed for imposing restrictive conditions on the conduct of any trade or business and includes any federation of two or more trade unions exceptions provided that this act shall not affect any agreement between partners as to their own business any agreement between an employer and those employed by him as to such employment any agreement in consideration of the sale of the goodwill of a business or of instruction in any profession trade or handicraft so provided this act shall not affect to any agreement between partners as to their own business part own business any agreement between an employer and those employed by him as to such employment then any agreement in consideration of the sale of the goodwill of a business or of instruction in any profession trade or handicraft it is the object of the association or combination that determine whether it is a trade union or not for example a society of authors publishers and other owners of copyright meant to protect their copyright in music and songs was held not to be a trade union by the house of lords so it is the object of the association or combination that determines whether it is trade union or not if a society of author publisher and other other owners of copyright uh, was formed to protect their copyright in music and so songs it was held that it can't be a it can't be under the category of trade unions then tamil nadu ngo union versus registrar trade union it was in 1962 madras high court this case was registered and in tamil nadu ngo union which was an association of sub magistrate of the judiciary tehsil das etc was not a trade union because these people were engaged in sovereign and legal functions of the state where were its in alienable functions so if they are uh, engaged in some sovereign and legal functions of the state where were its in alienable functions so they can't be treated as trade unions now 
application of registration of trade union uh, section 5 gives the details of application it says that the application should be sent to the registrar along with the copy of the rules of the trade union and a statement of the following particulars so for getting the uh, trade union registers we have to uh, do send a application to the registrar along with the copy of the rules of the trade union and a statement of the following particulars in statement we will describe the name occupation and addresses of the applicants the name of the trade union and the address of its head office the title name ages addresses and occupation of the office bearer of the trade union then if the trade union has been in existence for more than one year a general statement of its assets and liabilities so name occupation and addresses of the applicants will be there and that statement then the name of the trade union and the address of its head office will be there then the title name age addresses and occupation of the office bearer of the trade unions will be there and if the trade union has been in existence for more than one year it has to submit its general statement of its assets and liabilities now contain of the rule book it has to submit one rule book also and what that rule book will contain that is section 6 provisions to be contained in the rules of a trade union uh, specifies the provisions that should be contained in the rule book of the trade union a copy of this rule book must be supplied along with the application for registration of trade union this rule book details the internal administration of the trade union and also determines and governs the relationship between the trade union and its member so a copy of this rule book must be uh, must be supplied along with the application for registration of the trade union this rule book details the internal administration of the trade union and also determines and governs the relationship between the trade union and its members now coming to section 23 it describes the change of name of trade union any registered trade union may with the consent of not less than two thirds of the total number of its member and subject to the provisions of section 25 change its name so if any trade union wants to change its name it has to get the consent of not less than two third of its total member now section 24 tells us about the amalgamation of trade unions any two or more registered trade unions may become amalgamated together as one trade union they can join together as one trade union with or without dissolution or division of the funds of such trade union or either or any of them they can uh, dissolve or without dissolution they can also work, work as uh, one trade union or there can be division of funds or there cannot be division of funds of such trade unions or either any of them provided that the votes of at least one half of the members of each or every such trade union in entitled to vote are recorded and that at least 60 percent of the votes recorded are in favor of the proposal at least half of the members have have to vote for such amalgamation and if half of the member out of those half members at least 60 percent of the votes should be in the favor of the amalgamation now notice of change of name or amalgamation notice in writing of every change of name of every amalgamation signed in the case of a change of name by the secretary and by seven members of the trade union changing its name and in the case of an amalgamation by the secretary and by seven members of each and every trade union which is part there too shall be sent to the registrar so in uh, notice in writing of every change of name of every amalgamation signed in in the case of change of name that uh, notice should be signed by the secretary and by seven members of the trade union changing its name and in case of amalgamation the secretary and by seven members of 
each and every trade union which is part T there too shall be sent to the registrar and where the head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated in different state to the registrar of such state if that head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated in different state then each trade union has to send such notice to the registrar of each state if the proposed name is identical with that by which any other existing trade union has been registered or in the opinion of the registrar so nearly resembles such name as to be likely to deceive the public or the members of either trade union the registrar shall refuse to register the change of name so if the proposal name is identical with that by which any other existing trade union has been registered so if it is identical to any trade union which is which has already registered or in the opinion of the registrar it is resembling the name of any other trade union and public may get deceived by such name the registrar shall refuse to register the change of name save as provided in subsection 2 the registrar shall if he is satisfied that the provisions of this act in respect of change of name have been complied with register the change of name in the register referred to in section 8 and the change of name shall have effect from the date of such registration if the registrar is satisfied that the provisions of this act in respect of change of name has been complied with and the register he can register the change of name in the register with uh, referred to uh, referred in section 8 and the change of name shall have effect from the date of such registration as so as the registrar registers the change of name it will have its effect the registrar of the state in which the head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated shall if he is satisfied that the provisions of this act in respect of amalgamation have been complied with and that the trade union form thereby is entitled to registration under section 6 register the trade union in the manner provided in section 8 and the amalgamation shall have effect from the date of such registration the registrar of the state in which the head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated if he is satisfied that the provisions of this act in respect of amalgamation have been complied and uh, with that and the registration and with that the un trade union form thereby is entitled to registration under section 16 register he can register the trade union in the manner provided in section 8 and the amalgamation shall have effect from the date of such registration effects of change of name and of amalgamation that is section 26 describes the effects of change of name and of amalgamation the change in the name of a registered trade union shall not affect any rights or obligation of the trade union or render defective any legal proceeding by or against the trade union and any legal proceedings which might have been continued or commenced by or against it by its former name may be continued or commenced by or against it by its new name so the change in the name of a registered trade union shall not affect any right or obligation of the trade union or render defective any legal proceeding by or against the trade union and any legal proceeding which might have been continued or commenced by or against it by its former name may be continued or commenced by or against it by its new name an amalgamation of two or more registered trade unions shall not prejudice any right of any of such trade union or any right of a creditor of any of them so effect of change of name uh, name and of amalgamation if there is any legal proceeding which is against the trade union or uh, the, the trade union is taking any legal proceeding against anyone that will be continued or commenced by by the changed name 
a copy of every alteration made in the rules of a registered trade union shall be sent to the registrar within 15 days of the making of the alteration for the purpose of examining the document referred to in subsection 1 2 and 3 the registrar or any officer authorized by him by general or special order may at all reasonable times in respect um, times inspect the certificate of registration account books registers and other documents relating to a trade union at its registered office or may require their production at such place as he may specify in this behalf but no such place shall be at a distance of more than 10 miles from the registered office of a trade union so for the purpose of examining the document the registrar or any officer who is authorized uh, by general or special order may at all reasonable times inspect the certificate of registration account books registers and other documents relating to trade union at its registered office or may require their production at such place as he may specify in this behalf but such place should not be at a distance of more than 10 miles from the registered office of that particular trade union now finally coming to the conclusion uh, trade union uh, still tend to play an important role in protecting workers and helping them enforcing their legal rights particularly in cases when these rights may be uncertain or under debate unions will also be able to support employees when they feel that the psychological contract between workers and managers is being breached and can help workers to renegotiate this contract if necessary unfortunately a post structuralist view of the trade unions indicates that the unions tend to be more responsive to their own social contract with the workers than to the actual needs and demands of the workplace itself so trade union still play an important role in the protecting workers and helping them to enforce their legal rights particularly in cases when these rights may be uncertain or under debate but now it is it has been found that these trade unions are more responsive in making their own social contract with the workers than to the actual needs and demands of the workplace itself so what we have learned in this uh, presentation is that if any registered trade union wants to change its name any registered trade union with the, it has to take the consent of not less than two third of the total number of its member if he, if that trade union wants to change its name for, then for the amalgamation any two or more registered trade union may become amalgamated together as one trade union with or without dissolution or division of the funds of such trade union or either or any one of them provided that the votes of at least one half of the members of each or every such trade union entitled to vote are recorded and that at least 60 percent of the votes recorded are in favor of the proposals half of half, at least half of the members of the trade unions each trade union have to vote and in uh, those half members at least 60 percent of the voters have to vote in favor of the proposal then two trade union two or more trade, trade union can work as one trade union and they can uh, dissolve or they can work without dissolving also they can divide their funds they can work without dividing their funds also but they can uh, work as one trade union now this notice of change of name of, or amalgamation it should be given uh, to the uh, change of name every member signed in case of change of name by the secretary and by seven members of the trade union changing its name and in the case of an amalgamation by the secretary and by seven members of each and every trade union which is a party there sh too shall be sent to the registrar and where the head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated in a different state to the registrar of such state so this notice of change of name and amalgamation has to be sent to the registrar and it has to be signed by the secretary and by seven members of the trade union 
and if it is amalgamation that it has then each and every trade union has to give notice in which it, there will be a sign of the secretary and the seven members of the trade union if the trade unions are situated in different state then the uh, it will be the notice will be sent to the registrar of different states so uh, the registrar of the state in which the head office of the amalgamated trade union is situated shall if he is satisfied that the provision of this act in respect to amalgamation have been complied with and that the trade union formed thereby is entitled to registration under uh, section 6 register the trade union in the manner provided in section, section 8 and the amalgamation shall have effect from the date of such registration if such so, registrar is of the state is satisfied that all the provisions have been complied with he can allow the amalgamation of the trade unions and it will have effect from the date of such registration similarly for the change of name also the registrar shall if he is satisfied that the provision of the act in respect of change of name have been complied with uh, register the change of name in the register referred to in section 8 and the change of name shall have effect from the date of such registration so class this was all about your change of name and amalgam amalgamation under trade union act thank you class